Night falls on the Straits of Malacca. For generations, fishing boats have sailed these waters. Nowadays, their cargo is human. Illegal workers bound for Malaysia just four hours away. Buses bring the cargo, the potential illegal workers, into Dumai. They come from all over Indonesia. And the smugglers, called Taekongs, wait to collect their valuable product. Here, though, most of the Taekongs like to keep a low profile. We'll be able to get some pictures of you. We were told that Mizina is the head of one of the largest smuggling rings and that she could tell us how the workers get from Indonesia to Malaysia. <laughs> So we took the advice of a retired Taekong. Our destination was Rangsang Island. It seems like a quiet, sleepy kampong, but the locals here are third-generation smugglers. Illegal teak trading is the backbone of their business, but they make hefty profits from smuggling people as well. In this small house, we found half a dozen illegal workers, all desperate to make their fortunes in Malaysia. Kalau di Jawa, itu tiap hari kerja untuk makan habis tak ada kelebihan, tak ada sisa. Tapi ada sisa-sisa sedikit. Kalau ke Malaysia, juga ke sana untuk mencari kelebihan yang banyak. Untuk bikin biaya di Jawa. sekolah anak, untuk bikin, untuk bikin anak keluarga. Pierre Jo, Tugi Man and the rest of this group have taken a great risk just to get this far. And they're prepared to risk their lives. Last year, a hundred people drowned trying to cross to Malaysia. Itu ya khawatir juga. Tapi bahasa memang kalau bangga lewat resmi itu biayanya tak cukup kurang mampu jadi ya terpaksa dari kepercayaan hatilah untuk di sana itu semoga selamat di perjalanan On this island life and the smuggling business go hand in hand There are four Taekongs here all reluctant to admit that smuggling illegal workers is one of their main jobs Finally, we managed to track down two of them here in this modest house. Dia silahnya dari Lombok itu tujuan kan ke Riau itu mencari kerja. Sampai di sini kadang-kadang kan orang umumnya minta antar ke Malaysia. Kalau kebetulan kita mau berangkat teki itu sedang kita kita bawa dia itu cara sambilan itu kadang-kadang lah ada 10, ada 15, kan kadang-kadang ada juga dua orang. Tapi nggak ada juga orang itu tetap juga berangkat bawa kayu. Teki. Bahayanya bagi diri pribadi. Kadang-kadang ketemu angin topan, kadang-kadang ketemu petroli. Ya itu udah kewajiban saya untuk bagaimana caranya mengatasi masalah. In Malaysia, it's boom time. And nowhere is that more obvious than in the capital, Kuala Lumpur. Big buildings, big construction, big growth. Malaysia is obsessed with becoming a first world country by the year 2020. And central to this massive boom are the cheap foreign workers. 
They're driving the bulldozers, the cranes, the trucks. In fact, they're driving much of this economic growth. It's their cheap labour that has put Malaysia where it is today. There are up to three million overseas workers here. About a million are illegal. Most of them have arrived unaware they're just fodder for a raging economy. There's a real sense in which the leadership of this country is committed to growth almost for its own sake, uh, maintaining this very high level of growth. And this would be almost impossible to sustain without inputs, particularly labour inputs. Almost all the construction projects in the, in the city, uh, in the country, would grind to a halt without foreign labour. The working day begins at this building site in Kuala Lumpur. This is a Kong Si. It's what the workers call home. In this case, containers stacked on top of each other. They live eight or ten to a room, and most are illegal workers. Bribes are common, and official raids are rare. Employers or agents keep the workers as virtual prisoners, telling them that if they leave the site, they risk arrest and deportation. Just after arriving here, it was confirmed that the site was full of illegal workers they didn't want us to see. So you don't allow you to take it. I think you better leave the place without the permission to come in. You know, why, why are they the here? Security. Soon after, we were forced off the site. There is very little doubt that foreign workers in this country are super exploited in the sense that they are subject to poorer remuneration, poorer working conditions. There are many instances, there are many stories of, um, of very severe abuses uh, by employers, by agents, by supervisors and so on and so forth, uh, some of which have even ended in death. And the Malaysian government is reluctant to do anything about it. We cannot complain too much because we do require the services. There are abuses, of course, in the process because there are illegal workers coming in. There are being complaints about the treatment of some of these workers. So I think this needs to be regularised. 29-year-old Ili Susanto has just started working at this site. Illegal for four years, he's now got his work permit papers. Ili lives in one of the many Indonesian shanty towns in Kuala Lumpur. Illegal workers here are freer than those imprisoned by their employers, but their days are still dominated by fear and suspicion. On the edge of the forest, behind the crowded houses, a group of illegal workers have built their shacks. Mustakim has been in Malaysia for eight months, and he's starting to regret his decision to come. I was in Kuantan, I didn't get a job. I didn't get a job for three months, I was paid for 100 ringgit. And now I'm waiting for it if there's one. Musta Kim is too afraid to leave this squatter settlement in case he gets arrested. He told me that nothing is more frightening than being interrogated by the police. Kalau saya jumpa polis rasanya badan tu ada rasa gemetar. Kata orang tak boleh lah macam itu. Tapi macam mana yang saya takutkan kalau boleh runding tak apa. Takut kalau saya diantar balik ke Kendun kita tu malu lah. Dan kedua saya sini ada ada bini saya macam mana di sini macam itu. If Musta Kim gets arrested, this is where he'll end up, incarcerated in one of Malaysia's eight detention centres for illegal migrants. This is the Lengang camp outside Kuala Lumpur, a place that we were not allowed to film or visit. There are 1,600 inmates, and a visitor told us that six people had recently died there. The most damning stories about the treatment of illegal workers in Malaysia come from these detention camps. Soon after Ili first arrived from Indonesia, he was held in detention for 14 days. 
roti dia tiga keping saja dia sama teh dia nih kalau makan dia. kalau tidur dia lagi susah dia dia sampai dua jam dia kasih bangun dia suruh berbaris dia dia kira takut kawan dia lari kurang satu apa dapat dua jam dua jam terus lah dia setiap hari dia bagaimana kalau baris bila baris masa baris itu you tertidur kalau tertidur dia kena hantam dia pokoknya kawan kalau tidur saya pernah satu kali dia dah tertidur dia langsung kena hantam dia. kena hantam dua kali sama polis dia. I think it's horrifying from the stories and the experience told to us by migrant workers. <clears throat> I think uh, uh, they live in a very dehumanized uh, condition. Irene Fernandez and her organization investigated conditions in the detention centers and claimed that many of them were like modern day concentration camps. Today, she's off to court. The Malaysian authorities claim that her allegations are groundless and they've charged her with false reporting. But she stands by her story. I think it's a way of trying to, to gag anything negative that can be said of the state and of its actions. What I've made are serious allegations uh, that the government cannot run away from. Deputy Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim launches Malaysia's latest bid for first world economic status, a new financial rating system. Malaysia's pride is growing along with its transformation and there's not much room or much time in this booming economy to worry about the foreign workers. Well, we, we take a positive view in the sense that uh, the country needs the services of foreign workers. What we would like to see happen is a proper uh, regulation, uh, a proper agreements with governments so that they come on a stipulated period uh, with, with uh, proper papers and return. We visited work sites here where there are openly, you know, many, many illegal workers and the employers themselves don't seem concerned about that, they don't seem worried about implementation by the Malaysian authorities. There has been enforcement. I mean, there are, you know, I can cite figures, thousands have been deported, hundreds of cases, uh, you know, brought to the courts. So, I mean, it's not a question of condoning such activities. It's not a question of our condoning. Can I ask you about that? No matter what the Deputy Prime Minister says, the Malaysian government hasn't shown the determination needed to solve the problem. And so the trade in illegal workers continues. Well, I think uh, the justification for what is happening um, is a simple one. The claim that uh, these workers want to come here. It's not, we are not forcing them to come here. They choose to come here. And it's because it's impossible to keep them out. Uh, the, the, we have basically taken a, a, an attitude of benign neglect, so to speak, except that, of course, the consequences are not terribly benign. Back in Indonesia, it's business as usual. In fact, this is a hugely successful operation. Despite the risks of death, exploitation and detention, the illegal workers will keep coming. Desperate to achieve massive economic growth, Malaysia is turning a blind eye to an illegal trade it has come to depend on. <laughs> 